Hi, this is Dave from Retired Time Productions, and welcome to the Polaris XL Build Project, Part 6. So the uh, 3M77 is dry now, and I'm just sanding the pedestal using one of these coarse sanding blocks from the hardware. This came from Lowe's. And they had fine, medium, and coarse. So I got coarse. I don't know what grit it is, but I think it's probably somewhere around 150 grit. And I'm just rounding the corners. And then you can use like a finer grit to just polish it a little bit. And that's about it on that piece. Okay, just going to go over how to build the nacelle. Now the bottom of the nacelle consists of these two pieces here and they have to be glued like that. The bottom of the nacelle fits around the pedestal like that. Because this is a little unclear in the directions, but after reading a little bit you can figure it out but there's also a piece that you have to cut that forms the top rim of the of the uh, the cell which goes like in there and then this goes up against it and then you sand this surface here to a bevel heat it and bend it around the nacelle such like that so the first thing we need to do is glue these two pieces together. Then we'll cut some of these and glue them on the top edge of the sides like this. So that's the first things we need to do. Okay, so I recommend when you glue these two pieces together use something that uh, has a, a little bit of dry time to it so that you can move these around and get them aligned pretty good. And I'm going to use my favorite here, foam tack. Now I could also use welders, but welders has a tendency to dissolve Depron. So I'm not going to use that. It also kind of turns yellow after a while, but that's not a big issue. I would use it if it didn't dissolve the Depron. But we'll just go ahead and use this. Now the reason I'm not going to use the uh, 3M Super 77 is because it really doesn't give me as much time to move the pieces around and get them aligned so I'm just gonna go with the foam tack and such as it's a small piece so it shouldn't be difficult to apply foam tack if it was a large piece I'd probably want to go with the 3M77 what we want to do is get all of this especially this part right in here this part right in here get that even and you can check the back here to make sure this is going to fit flush. Just push that on so that feels flush back here. Then get the sides lined up. And I can slide it around a little bit because it doesn't dry right away. And that's why I'm using foam tack. Now let's go ahead and cut us some pieces for the top of the nacelle sides. And I'm just using some of these strips that came with the kit. Some of you have probably seen uh, How To RC. He does a build of a, I don't think it's, it's an Excel or an XL version. It's a, but it is very similar to this. It's a Polaris, just not an XL, not as big. But he does a very good build on it. I recommend it. But it's not a kit. He has to cut all the pieces out himself. And there are some differences in the way he puts it together from the kit. And the nacelle is one of them. He has a little bit different technique on that. But I'm just following the directions that came with the kit. Okay, so I did one here and I just glued it at the top edge. This is flush there, and uh, this is the slanted side. And you'll see the shorter side goes towards the bottom, and this rim goes at the top on the longer side. 
Now I could make one just identical to it, but that wouldn't be good because they got to be mirror image. A mirror image of each other. So remember, they got to go on opposite sides of the nacelle bottom. One's got to go here, and one's got to go here, so we need the rim on this inner side on this one. So take a look at them so they'll be mirror images of each other. With this being the top now. The long side's always the top. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and butt this on to the end right over here. And then just lay it down. And so coming up, we're going to be sanding a bevel right on here. I'll probably cut that little end up, but we're going to be sanding a bevel, heating it, and bending it so it matches the bend on the nacelle. And that's going to be a little tricky, something I've never done before. And I may practice on a piece of Depron first with a heat gun to see just how much heat it will take. But before we get started, we need to uh, bevel the end of it right here before we bend it. So let's go ahead and I'm going to give it a head start by just cutting off this piece like that. Let's go over here on the edge of the table. Just take a sanding block and sand a nice little bevel. Now I found a good trick was just to lay them side by side and maybe have a better chance of getting a symmetrical bend right there so they're pretty much the same. I'm just sanding them so that they both look the same and have a thin edge. Okay? Okay, now we're going to try to bend them. That so it's hot. I'm going to hold it back quite a ways. I'm holding it back about six inches. Because that thin edge there might melt if I get too close. Now, just try to bend it. It's not soft enough. I might have to hold a little closer. Gone down to about five inches. I'm going to try it again. Yeah, that's a little more pliable. Yeah. I'm just pushing on it. Now we'll test fit it. It's not coming around there quite enough yet. We'll hit it some more. Both sides. I think maybe this back side is the better way to go. It was awfully hot. Test it again. It needs quite a bit more of a bend. right on the tip here and check it again now it looks like it needs more of a bend right in this area starting right here right about there I have to resist the tendency to get too close Trying to stay back about four inches. Let's see what we got now. Hey, that looks pretty good. So now let's just go ahead and glue some of the pieces together. I'm going to go ahead and start with this back 
piece. I don't know what you call it. A former or something. But I'm going to put that on the end. A little bit of CA. This is where the motor mount will eventually go. And as you can see, the sides fit right around that. We'll see, eh? Get that on camera, right? Get it on camera first. Get it lined up. And then we'll press it in place. Coating the surfaces with a little bit of CA. Whatever it takes. And there it is. This is where it's going to contact, right there. both sides. No sense putting glue on stuff that it's not going to touch. I guess it'll touch around here a little bit. Right around there. Okay. So I got glue on all those surfaces. Now let's put this on. What I'm going to do is spread those a little bit and just put them over that And line up the back and just press it down. Right. Now I haven't glued this part yet. We'll get that next. Okay, now I'm just going to spread this apart. And put a little glue down in here. And a little glue on here. It's a little hard to keep it on camera while I'm trying to do this. That's the trouble trying to film something and do it at the same time. Because it just doesn't want to cooperate. So, put that on there. And then I'll just hold it down and spritz it a little bit. So I've glued the other side the same way and spritzed it with some accelerator. And now the nacelle is glued to the top of the pedestal. Okay, the next thing is this is not perpendicular here. It's kind of leaning to one side. And I think that's because this sticks up a little bit and the sides aren't perfectly level. Just some little imperfections, and I'd kind of like to have it flat so that when I put the horizontal stabilizer on, that that is flat. So I'm going to go ahead and sand it a little bit. I've got some coarse sandpaper here, and I'm just going to lay it down and keep it perpendicular and sand it a little bit. looking better. To get an idea I'm just going to put a piece of wood next to it just to see that is very perpendicular. Let's, let's commit to it. Let's go on there. Take your bike.